many of you watching wear a smartwatch or some sort of wearable. It could be a recovery band, maybe a ring or an Apple Watch. I for one have been testing the Apple Watch for years and tracking all the new features that come with every update. But this week is special because a feature they announced at the Apple event in September has finally made it here to India. It's hypertension notifications for patients with high blood pressure or hypertension. This can be a lifesaver. But how accurate is it? Are they using just one sensor? Is there some sort of new software tweak? Because the Apple Watch Ultra 2 is pretty much the same watch that launched in September. Apple's Sumbul Desai joins us live from Cupertino. Sumbul, thanks so much for joining us on Tech360. We're going to pick your brains on everything Apple Health and Apple Watch. I want to start off by asking you, hypertension notifications are a big step for wearables. Now, how did Apple actually crack passive detection of high blood pressure using just the optical heart rate sensor on the Apple Watch? Using the optical heart sensor on Apple Watch, the algorithm looks for signs of chronic high blood pressure by analyzing how your blood vessels respond to the beats of the heart. When your heart beats, it actually pushes blood outward away from your heart blood pressure momentarily increases and blood surges outward. As that surge happens, blood vessels stretch outward responding to the pressure. Everything we build in health is grounded in science. The feature was developed with advanced machine learning and training data from multiple studies totaling over 100,000 participants. The algorithm was then validated in a study with over 2,000 participants spanning broad representation across demographics. In the study, participants wore Apple Watch for 30 days while also taking twice daily blood pressure cuff measurements, which were used to establish ground truth. You know, I find this fascinating. You're expecting over a million new hypertension detections in year one. How do you strike the balance between giving users meaningful guidance and information without causing unnecessary panic, Sumbo? We design all of our products and features to be there when you need them and fade into the background when you don't. We're not incentivized by the amount of time you spend on our devices. And because of that, we have a high bar for when we do notify people of a change in their health data. We really want to ensure that the notification is accurate, meaningful, and helpful. So I'll explain a little bit more. In addition to extensive validation before releasing a feature, notifications must meet a certain threshold before it even reaches a user. We have teams of physicians, designers, engineers working together to ensure we're surfacing meaningful insight to users in a way that's easy to understand and take action when needed. We also think quite carefully and thoughtfully about how we're presenting information to our users, especially when it comes to your health. And it's a critical part of our development process, including user experience testing, and from words to colors to the source, these are all things that we think about in the design of our products. You know, you're talking to us from Apple Park, and at Apple, we've seen that a lot of the features that you launch, launched, especially in the health and wearable space, are not gimmicks. They're features that people actually use, me included, especially on the Apple Watch. I've always been curious, what is that asset test or the internal guideline or framework for the teams at Apple Health to decide which of these ideas actually become features on the Apple Watches and other devices? It's such a great question. We reach people in ways that only Apple can. At Apple, we're deeply fortunate to serve customers in every corner of the planet. Today, there are hundreds of millions of iPhones and Apple Watch users who not only love their devices, but take them wherever they go. And when we reflect on those numbers, we're not just proud, but we're also incredibly motivated because we see a profound opportunity to improve people's lives. We're not in it to reinvent healthcare, but we do want to change your relationship to healthcare and to yourself. And as a, both a doctor and a patient, I know it can be overwhelming to think about your health. So at Apple, we really want to change that. And that starts with giving everyone simple, approachable ways to lead fuller, healthier lives. So in, in the end of it, we really think about how we can have the most impact for our customers and make a meaningful change in their health. You know, I've noticed sleep is a huge part of Apple's health push of late. Why focus so heavily on sleep literacy now? And what role does sleep score play in that vision for Apple? 
Most people understand the importance of physical activity, but we actually tend to underestimate the impact of what happens to our bodies when it feels like we're doing nothing at all, otherwise called rest. And yet sleep is absolutely fundamental to our health. It's the time our bodies need to recover and renew. And when we don't sleep, the consequences can be quite severe. So for example, after 24 hours without sleep, your reaction time slows. You notice changes in your memory, you might have some muscle tremors and impaired vision or hearing. By 72 hours, those symptoms increase dramatically and you might even start to hallucinate. And even if we're not talking about anything that extreme, simply not getting enough sleep over the long term has been shown to raise your risk for every, from everything from depression to high blood pressure. So in many ways, when it comes to your daily health, there's very little that's more important than sleep. We know how important it is to develop healthy sleep habits, so we've created features like the sleep score, wind down, and sleep tracking. They're just simple, easy to use tools that can make it easy for anyone to improve their sleep and ultimately their quality of life. Better sleep, better recovery, better health and fitness, and a good quality of life. That's exactly what all of us strive for, even here on Tech360. Sumul, thanks so much for joining us and telling us all about these new features when it comes to Apple health and fitness. And I'm sure we're going to be using these, especially when we travel around the world to bring all this tech content together and fight that jet lag and make sure that we're giving you quality content with quality of life as well. Thanks so much for joining us. Music